All right, say goodbye to the default cube, and let's just throw another one in. You know, got to keep it standard. There, go vertical split. We're going to turn this into a circular array and play with a couple things. Geometry nodes based. You can get rid of that. Let's put in a mesh circle. Okay, and you can just tag in the mesh circle. Now we're going to array on this, and you can array anything. So instance on points. Let's see what blender I'm using 4.02, 4.0.2. And now that we've got this, we can just instance anything. So anything like a UV sphere will do. I'm going to bring the radius down before I plug it in. And now we have a radial array. And then, of course, whatever you've got as your control here for segments and whatever else, that's going to give you the ability to change how this is. And now we've got segments on here. And the mesh circle is going to provide the vertice count, which you can bring down. Very easy to use. And then, of course, the radius is going to change a few things. But let's say you wanted to put something on there that's a little bit more square. So let's go ahead and drop in the cube primitive and tag it in. And then for this, I always like the scale elements. Not the scale, instant scale, but scale elements. And when I do that, I'll be able to control these just a little bit better. And I don't have to play around. I can leave these at one. It's fine. Blender likes them all at one anyways. So now with this, we can kind of build something out. I'm going to output the scale. The vertice count and the radius over here. So we've got something to work with. And it just makes a little more sense if the radius is up top so i'm just going to drag that if you don't know that's blender 4.0 that's kind of how it is now you just drag it there's no arrow that's going to help you um, go up and down just drag and drop now so now we've got the radius over here i've got a scale for my instances and then i've got the array vertice count now the reason that is working is if i grab this mesh circle and we use the viewer node you can see this is actually giving us the vertice count here. So you got like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I guess. Let's see, how many do I have? 12, 13. Okay, yeah, so this one was actually 13. I avoided it. So 13. So if you increase to 14, you get a bigger count. All the way down to 3, you've got 1, 2, 3 vertices, which matches here. So it just kind of gives you a little idea. Now, I'm going to go ahead and delete that viewer node, and none of these are actually facing the correct way. So we can change that with an align rotation. Okay, so you want to pull this out, left click, drop it, and let's get an align Euler to vector rotation. Now, if we try to rotate this, it's going to do funky stuff. It's not going to really do what we want. We can put it on Z, Y, and do a bunch of different things, but it's still not really giving us what we want. So what we want to do is go ahead and let's type in normal, and let's. And once you've got your normals, let's go ahead and just plug that in. And if you're on the X, then you're going to have a very nicely aligned array. And that can definitely help you if you wanted to do something different with this mesh and you need it all to face the same way. Now the cool thing is with this type of an array you can change this and you could technically turn this into blocks or anything else that you could think of. You could turn this into a wall very easily. I'm not going to be covering all of that. It's just going to go over some of the actual basics so you have a general idea of how to do this. All right, I'm going to do just a second or two of housekeeping here and what I want to do now is I want to input something that's going to allow us to switch what goes in as the instance now there are some nodes that handle this there's one specific uh, it's actually if you type in instance you'll see you have geometry to instances and this is actually a pretty cool node but I'm just going to be using a switch because of the specific need that I have. Now we can grab an object info node and throw that in here and I'll go ahead and connect this. Now this is going to work uh, with the boolean 
checkbox. So we'll go ahead and output this. And so now we have a switch and always good to name things. So what is this gonna be? And you could just name it switch underscore, let's just say instance. You can switch the instance right here. Now, what do you wanna put in? It really doesn't matter. You can put in anything. Uh, you can put in the monkey head just so we can kind of see what might be going on here. I'll grab the cube and lock this workspace in so that doesn't flip around. And I can output this as well. And now I can just select the monkey. And I can bring the monkey head down just a touch. And you'll notice that we have this thing going on. Well, what is that? Well, that is basically all of the loose parts here in the mesh and that is due to the scale so if we put that to one then it's going to kind of blow up but we grab the suzanne and scale that down and apply that scale now from here we can actually go back into the array change that radius just a little bit and change the vertice count something like eight would work good with this so as you can see, the scale elements really isn't going to work sometimes. You just have to kind of know what's happening. If you have a multi-part mesh, not really going to work too good. You'll need to do it from here. And we can switch this to relative. And now you can actually just scale everything as you wish, which makes it just a little bit easier. And if you want to change the rotation, you can. And have them all facing out right here. So supposedly you just do... Rotate Z 180. Boom. They're all facing out now. You didn't even have to mess with the rotation node. Okay. So there's a lot you can actually do. And we can actually output that as well. And I'm going to rotate that negative Z 180. Bring it back. And they're all back. So that works pretty cool. Well, now here's something just a little bit different. So let's grab cylinder scale it down apply the scale and i'll go ahead and throw in a cone as well and apply that scale and i'm going to select all of these objects except for the cube and i'm going to hit m and i want to move these to a new collection let's call it collection two whatever and instead of maybe the object info what i can do is i can drag the collection info in and click this, right? So now I wanna separate children, reset children, and now everything is kind of stuck in here. So if you wanted to do an array with different objects in it, it does kind of make sense, but you've got to do a couple of things. One of them is you're gonna to have to come over to your instance on points and click pick instance. Why would you do that? Well, if you hover your mouse over here, it's gonna tell you. Choose an instance from Mr. so you can instance on each point instead of the entire geometry. It's pretty simple and straightforward and just kind of tells you what you need to do. So now we've got this set up. We can come back in and now we're controlling all of these instances yet again. And the diversity count is going to give you some sort of a probability, if you will, and allow you to do that, that thing that you need to do. So that worked pretty good and Another one of those basic but very useful tricks is now maybe we want the scale of these to be just a little bit different. So I can type in random and get a random value and plug in the float to the vector scale. And now I've got a random value from zero to one. It doesn't make a lot of sense for it to be that low. So you can kind of change this around if you wanted to give it some variation for some reason. And there you go. And of course, you've got a seed value. It's not gonna be too effective there, but it does help if you need it. And one last thing, if you wanna have some fun, let's go ahead and just delete everything out of here. And I wanna go to curves and I will get a bezier. And now we can throw some geometry onto the bezier. And let's go ahead and do another instance on points. And we'll get a UV sphere, radius to point 0 0.05 until I like what I see. This is a curve. So I'm going to do a resample curve. And now I've actually got a count. That's pretty cool. 
And what we can do now is I'll jump into edit mode. And since it is a curve, we can bring out the T panel and I can grab the draw pin. Now I'm going to hit A for all X and I want to delete those vertices. Could take up a top view. And now I can actually draw out these segments. And if I switch all that off, then I've got this segment that I can control. And now we can change the resolution down to like four or something. So it's fine. We're not overpowering it. If we end up with too much, change a couple of different things. And now you've got an array on a curve. Very easy to use. And there are a few more things you can do with this. One of those things is you can actually just jump back into edit mode, take up a top view, and you can select the handles, you know, and you can kind of rotate them and move the curve around. You can grab this uh, center, the center piece, if you will, <laughs> brain's not working, and you can pull your array. You can also hit E to extrude your array. You can grab this and turn it and have it going any sort of way that you want and then you kind of play around the count yet again so that would work with building fences and all kinds of other geometry then again you can put the switch in here you can do a pick instance if you want it to be multiple items in there and this is not something i see talked about a lot but you can type in instance and the one we just spoke about was geometry to instances so i can throw that in and now let's just grab an icosphere. And now I can bring the radius down a touch for that. And I'm going to tag this in. And it's going to allow me to have multiple instance points going into the instance on points. Okay, so you're instancing multiple objects now. You're not necessarily distributing points on faces. This is an actual separate instance that could get its own geometry nodes set up. So you could always put in a transform geometry and bring this up on the Z. And then if it's a simple setup like this, you can then scale that particular element down just a touch, bring that in and do whatever you really want with it. You can bring the radius up or I can bring it back down just a little bit. And then you can put in rotations and all sorts of cool things. And now that's about it. Actually, I just want to delete all of these Go back to edit mode if it's going to let me do it and then i want to draw these back in and you can put in anything you want at this point you're literally just drawing it in Oop, come back here and i do not have an artistic hand necessarily but I do have some good ideas once in a while and don't forget before you're all said and done if you can add some set materials and so if I wanted to actually do a set material on one and then a set material say on the other one then I can do that I'm gonna make a couple of quick materials I'll make one blender orange or close and one blender blue or close. And then once I come over here, I can make the UV sphere blue. And I come over, check this out. And it's going to be orange for the other instances. I know that's kind of hard to see. So let's zoom in. And there you go. That's just one way of doing it, and you can build on that and build on that and build on that and have a lot of fun. Smash that subscribe and that like on the way out. Go check me out on Blender Market. I've got some killer add-ons. Uh, my hard service toolbox right now is just ridiculous. You can actually switch galleries. So this one is the one you would load. Like if you went into my downloads, you would see I got some blend files. It's going to populate every blend file I have as something I can load and grab either objects right here or collections. If there's an object, it's going to append in said object for me. If there's a collection, it's going to do the other. Then I've got mirroring tools, symmetrizing tools. Uh, I'm kind of using Shift F right now. Let's see real quick. <laughs> We're 
Where is that thing? Um, yeah, Shift F. That's my symmetry tool, but you've got to be in edit mode. So Shift F will work there, and you can symmetrize real quick. And then if you're in object mode, you can use the mirroring tools. But those work. The mirror tools work in object and edit mode. And that's not even half of what this add-on is capable of because it's if you switch to gallery, come over here and reload it, you're going to get all these preset models. Some of them are intricate, some are kind of basic, uh, some are hard to create shapes to give you a bit of a start, if you will. And that's about it. I appreciate everybody watching. See you guys in the next one.